see. I forgot what my substitute teacher wants. Everybody's in the house tonight! It's you! Well, I just want to welcome everybody to the first RuPaul's Drag Con. How about that? It's just amazing, and I am so happy everybody got to come here. I have had a fabulous time. How about you? You know, a minute ago we were down, we were walking underground to get here, and somebody said, Does anybody have eyes on Big Frida? I busted a nut. <laughs> I, I, how often do you get to hear somebody, Does anybody have eyes on Big Frida? <laughs> it's just gorgeous. And all the stars have turned out tonight. The Cheryl Lee Ralph is up in the house. It's just. Honestly, that's what this whole thing is all about. It is about bringing people together from all over the world. Young people, older people. <laughs> you know, every nationality, everything. And that's what, what the show, RuPaul's Drag Race, is about. We are showing people that it's important to not take life, now bear with me, not, it's important to not take life so seriously. Yes, life is serious. But you have to have fun with it. You have to enjoy the colors and the music and the beauty and the joy. And that's the job of the drag queen throughout history. I tell, the, I tell people this in, in uh, all the interviews that I do. Uh, it's important to remember to have fun and to enjoy. Know what you're here for. To know what you're here for, which is you are the physical reality of, of, of God. I know, bear with me, bear with me, I know. You are, you are the physical realization of the power that created the entire universe. That's you. I'm not talking, I'm not talking to G uh, Gigi Caliente alone here. It's, it's not, it's, it, no, it, it's not, it's not just Jiggly. It's, it's you. And you, and you, everyone, everyone within the sound of my voice. That, well, that's what we're here for. That's why this thing is so important. I've been signing, I've been, I've been there signing everybody's uh, uh, little, you know, their things, their, their, their records, and everybody, everybody's got product now, you know. Everybody, I'm a brand, you know. And actually, this, uh, Tom, this uh, uh, season, um, the bitches came with their own brands, you know. <laughs> you know, it's like, they're ready. They're ready, they're just, they're, they, they grow up so fast, don't they, Tom? You know, they just they grow up. So we walk, they can walk through the doors. And we're, right now, we're in the process of, uh, you know, doing going through all the audition uh, process right now. So the kids, they send their things in, and they, when we, 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 we weed them that, weed them out, weed them to the, the best of the best. But the funny thing about it is that usually, um, everybody's the same audition, you know what I mean? It's all these, like, they're because, um, this is my Gaga outfit right here. <laughs> and, um, this, <laughs> this is my Beyonce. <laughs> and, and the minute somebody does something different, something unique, you go, wait, what was that? What is that? You know? And that's why, I'm, that's why this thing is here. This convention is a, a room full, a convention of people who understand how important it is to be yourself. And the most important thing you can do on this planet is become the realization of your own imagination. I don't care what that is. And you could be Jiggly Caliente. <laughs> Does anybody have eyes on Jiggly Caliente? Yeah, they're just sad. They're that. 
their lingo. You know, their lingo is just in your eyes. You know, you have to be there, I guess. <laughs> find that joy where you can. That's why RuPaul's Drag Con, first one, is so, it's, it's so important. It's so important to see all your faces out there and see, meet everybody. Get to meet her. I see, I see you on Twitter. I see you, your faces, your name, all you people out there. And the big news here is that you see each other on Twitter, but you, this time, you get to meet each other in person like this. You get to put a face with the name and connect. And I'm just excited for the sort of ripple effect this is going to have in pop culture for years to come. It's this convergence of people who love color and beauty and and everything. Oh, Tony's walking. Do you have, do you have eyes on? Do you have eyes on somebody, <laughs> Tony? She, you know, I want the interpreter up on the stage. You, would you put your chair up here? Yeah, come on up here. Yes, and you've got those green shoes on and everything. Before you get in the chair, I want you to do a little walk for me. Can you do a little walk? I'll show you how to do it first. This is what I want you. We don't have a lot of space here, but pretend like you can walk. I want you to walk this way, but keep your head turned like this. So that, you know, I'll show you how to do it. I want you to walk like this. As if this were the run of it, but keep your eye on the audience like this. Legs, my God, you were born to do this, you realize that, right? Okay, so um, go ahead on three. Now, sissy that wow. Now, um, now there is a lot of people in the audience now who, um, who um, is not surprised by my <laughs> my candor um, and the way I behave up on stage with the microphone. I feel very comfortable up here on stage. In fact, um, I'm going to introduce it. My sisters are here. We used to. Well, the truth is, of course. We are all family here, but my sisters are here. I'm gonna get them to stand up, but you know, they're used to when I was a little bit drag queen growing up in San Diego. I find my light for this one. I, I you know, I, I would put on shows, I do I was just a special child, let's just put it that way. And uh, and I'm sure a lot of you can relate to this, but they were very supportive of me. Actually, I don't, I don't want to even say the word supportive. There was never really an issue with little Ruru -Ru putting on dresses or colors or, you know, putting on shows. And, and there was never an issue with that. And I want to thank them for that. And yeah, I'm going to get them to stand. My sisters, Razi and Renetta, are here. Stand up, Razi and Renetta. Renetta, Renetta is is um, uh, just a few years older than me, and she's she's like my soul sister. She was the one who, you know, it's funny enough, she she cut out a, a, a she cut out an article in 1970 on Christine Jorgensen. Raise your hand if you know who Christine Jorgensen. <laughs> yes, the over 50 crowd knows. <laughs> I had no idea. So Chrissy Jordan was the, one of the first successful sex change operations. I don't know what Renata was trying to tell me then. <laughs> I was nine at the time. <laughs> and I gotta tell you, and Re Re Renata and her husband, they, uh, her husband went to UCSD in San Diego, and I used to go up to there where they lived in the dorm, whatever, uh, whatever. And Renata had a picture of 
Sylvester while he was in the Cockettes. There's this picture of him. It's a very famous picture where Sylvester is lounged on the Shea Lounge, and, and I remember asking her, "Who is that?" And he, and she's like, "That's Sylvester, yada yada, the Cockettes and stuff." Never forgot that. Never forgot that. Interesting. But that's why. I'm going to go back to, uh, to drag con again and how we create these families, we create the support system uh, that says, hey, you know what, what I, we, let's open the discussion. Let's talk about what's happening with you. Because, you know, for so many years, people don't have that. And you've seen this on, on Drag Race where a kid says, you know, they were kicked out of their, their family home or they were, you know, and we've heard the stories on there. And, you know, uh, the Roxy Andrews story, which just broke me up. And, of course, you know, doing the show, you can never plan for these moments when they come up. Um, but they do come up. And it is a discussion that needs to be had. And that's, again, why this is so important. All of you sitting in these seats to, to talk to one another, to see everybody, and to know that your story is, is my story. It's, it's the person next to you's story. And to get, get all this out. And, uh, and, and I'm so thankful for my sisters and my family for helping me do what I do, you know. That, of course, you had nothing to do with these petite features that I had. That was not you. That had nothing to do with you. But I mean, you, could have, you could have known that, uh, you know, these cheekbones would, uh, you know, would, uh, you know, put, you know, make them more touch at homes. <laughs> Knowing that, just said maybe you need a sex change. I don't know. <laughs> no, but it's great. And, that's, and again, I, that's what I'm. That's what I'm wanted to talk about tonight. It's just the family and creating a family. And and not only that. And as a lot of people who, who know me and who've watched me over the years, my thing has been all about loving yourself, loving yourself, and understanding that you are God's gift. To this world, yes, I said God. It's not doesn't belong to it doesn't belong to anybody. It's, it's all our work. It's the word. It's the word we use in, in our language to describe that which cannot be described. And so I'm going to say it loud and proud. You are God's gift to the world. And you need to be reminded of that. It's important to be reminded of that because it's so easy to forget that. My God, you get caught up on the interweb and people are saying all these nasty things, you know. You know, this season, um, we made a, Tom Campbell's here, who's one of the creators of the show, give him a big round of applause. <laughs> a lot of people don't know this, I'll give you a little insight. When I'm doing, I don't read a teleprompter on the show. Um, I have a earbud in, in my ear, and the person who is speaking to me in my earbud is Tom Campbell right here. And so he will come up with some jokes. He's got other writers who work with him, but he'll come up with some jokes for me to say. Actually, one time, the one time when Alaska was walking down the runway, and she had to make some outfit out of trash, I don't know what the thing was, but she made it out of a plastic trash bag. Remember that? And she was, and she looked gorgeous, and she's sauntering down, and she had this big trash bag with her, and it looked like, you know, um, like, like it was a, a, a dog poop bag, you know, when you walk the dog thing, and Tom said to me, in my earbud, he said to me, she must have the biggest dog in the world. <laughs> I, he said it, and I had to, I had to, before I could say it on camera, I have to laugh, get it out first, and then with a straight face, say the line, you know, but it is hilarious, hilarious. What was it, it was one thing too, that, uh, a lot of times in the script I have to say things that, um, uh, that I have to laugh with Michelle first and then say it, it's just hilarious, but um, I was going somewhere with this, and what I was going with was, <laughs> This season on the show, we have we decided that we would put younger, young. We would go a lot younger for season seven, and you see them. They're there. We have 21s. We have several 21-year-olds on the show, 
And because of that, you know, we've gotten a lot of younger fans on the show. And through social media, we've noticed that younger fans who don't know the history of, of the, gay, the gay experience, where there are certain double entendres, certain speech, if, you, it's, if spoken out of school, can be perceived as, um, I don't know, just like uh, misunderstood, right? So, but they've taken that part of the language without understanding the backstory uh, behind it. Do you know what I'm talking about, Nod your head? You know what I'm talking about? I'll, I'll explain it more. There's a, there is a certain hurtfulness that young people will display on social media that doesn't have the, um, the backstory uh, that some of the older queens would have. So I'm, I'm gonna try to break this down for you so you really understand. It, where I'm going with this is that it has been an issue and we wanted to address it somehow in our experience with the show. Uh, there's a certain meanness that has been happening that is not in line with the gay experience. You know what I mean? You know, um, with, with black folks, we can talk about certain things because we know that uh, we share the same experience, and we've been through the same thing. And the same with gay people, but the younger gay people seem to not have the background or haven't owned the right to say certain things. So we're just trying to figure out a way to educate people in a way to where um, it's not so hurtful. Are you following me? You know what I'm saying? Johnny McGovern, you know what I'm saying, right? So, you know, it's true, and, and, and this, okay, we're still trying to figure this out. But I wanted to talk about this in, in this uh, event right now. Because, you know, where we come from, we know the pain. We have lived through it. You know, a lot of us, a lot of the language that we talk about in the gay experience was a secret language. We had to have a secret language because we didn't want to be killed. We didn't want to be hurt by other people. So we had to create a secret language. And some of it, um, if it if heard out of school, so to speak, um, could be misperceived, it could be misunderstood, you know. So we're still trying to work this dialogue out with, with young people and educating them. Again, and that's why this event is so important, you know. I wish I could explain this more without saying lots of um, dirty words. <laughs> because I could. Um, but I'm trying to keep this clean, because I'm sure there are lots of kids in here. Are there kids in here? There are lots of kids in here, yeah. So I'm just trying to get this word out without having to say anything, really. Because, you know, because actually if I got T.S. Madison up here, she would break it down for you. She would break it down. And actually T.S. Madison has done a very good job of try explaining what, I, what I'm talking about, you know. Because, um, you know, we come from a long line of people whose, whose blood was spilled to make sure and ensure that we could have this convention here tonight. And this and so it, we, we, we would do them a disservice if we didn't acknowledge them and if we didn't uh, if we didn't educate young people about this. You know, we have so many freedoms right now. And who, who could have ever imagined the things that we, the freedoms we have right now as not just gay people, but people who think outside the box. And that's what this is all about. People who, people who, who love color and beauty and joy and love and freedom. And as, 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 as sort of cliche as that might sound, the truth is there's really, a, there's not that many, really. You know, it's like the bohemian creed of, of music and joy and just really enjoying life. And a lot of people get um, a lot of people get upset with you when you live that way. Because somehow it threatens their belief system. Somehow it, it, it forces is forces them to have to deconstruct their whole belief system and that threatens them. So I've always I've always tried to Stay out of the, stay, somehow stay under the radar, but still stay in on the radar. I remember one time my mother, uh, <laughs> 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 you remember that time, uh, Mama, uh, 
uh, she she was going to backhand slap Renee, but the sister who's not here. <laughs> the sister who's not here, Renee, she went to backhand uh, my sister Renee like that, you know, and Renee ducked. <laughs> Do you remember this or not? And she, ma Mama hit her hand on the wall because Renee ducked. Yeah, yeah. And see, Renee was smart. <laughs> Renee was smart because she knew. And I, uh, my whole, I, you know, I, 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 if there's something going on, if there's something, something gonna get hurt, I will fucking run. <laughs> run. I'm sorry, my my French. I'm sorry, that slipped out. I will. I so you know. Being, being a child of the 60s and 70s and, and free freedom and love and beauty, if there's something happening, if there's a dangerous something going on, I'm going to run the other way. I really am. And I've done a very good job of that all these years. But I, I said all that to say, you know, um, it's not easy being who we are. And it's important to let young people understand how this, how this came to be, to, to fill them in on the story that happened before this, you know? Sometimes they come into, into the storyline up here, and they didn't get all of this back here, you know? And it's important for them to know that, you know? When I was, I, you know, I was growing up, I, I grew up watching the Mike Douglas show. Remember the Mike Douglas show? And I, he had everybody on there. First time I saw Blondie, was on the Mike Douglas show. But it was also where I got to see Sarah Vaughn and Ella Fitzgerald, and everybody came through. That, that was back when we had four channels, of course. <laughs> and you know, now, because we have got unlimited channels and unlimited platforms for information, it's important for the people who were here for the whole story to sort of be a curator for young people and to guide them into the places, into the areas that the must-see places in this whole experience. And that's why I, I, I started on this thing about having a younger audience on our show who, um, who weren't here for the early part of the story. And that's why, that's where you come in. That's where each of you, when you, you go back to your towns and, and, and villages, <laughs> It, it takes a village, people. <laughs> um, you know that you, you spread the word. It's your, it's your spread. We try to do that on our show. You know, a lot of the things that we talk about on the show, a lot of the things that uh, we, we bring up, child, they are, they're old, it's old news, but it's, young to, it's new to them. It's new to them. We bring up things, I, I, you know, I've been in the I've been in gay life for years. <laughs> I've been in that. It's not just the gay life. The gay life is, is, is code for every, everything over here, out of the status quo stuff, you know. And which is the most interesting part, actually, you know. And there's a certain vernacular, there's a certain uh, way, approach to life, a certain approach to a joke, you know. Some of the things we say, <laughs> you can't say in public. You know, <laughs> you just can't. People won't understand it, you know. But we try to do that. We try to do that on our show. A lot of things, they, they've never heard of some of the things that we, we talk about there. But we feel like it is a public service that we're doing on RuPaul's Drag Race. And, on it, and yes, you can applaud that. <laughs> And that's an ex and this this event here is an extension of that. That's what this is all about. You know, I've said it many times that kindness is the new cool. It is the new cool. <laughs> it's, it's that is what we are here to do. Now, um, you know, I I can't I couldn't uh, uh, do this without one extra ele other element to this whole thing, which is. You know, my family at World of Wonder. Now, um, the guys who produced this show, along with Tom Campbell, and who produces this event, is uh, the people at World of Wonder. Can I get a round of applause? <laughs> now, these guys, they are um, Randy Barbado and Fenton Bailey. 
and yes. And I met these guys in, I met Fenton at the Pyramid Club um, on Avenue A in New York City in 84. And then I met um, Randy in 85. And we've literally been working together ever since. Ever since. And talk about finding your tribe, finding <coughs> your constituency and your comrades. Uh, that's what this is all about. That's what this event is all about. And I've, I've literally been working with them ever since. I, I can't count. I don't know how many years ago that was, but I know it's a long time. So if this event could serve you in that way, that's great also. Another component of our show is the music, which is so much fun. It doesn't make any money. <laughs> it doesn't make any money, but we do it because we love it. And the kid who I, who I work with on this uh, on the music is here. We've done three, out, four, I don't know, together. He's here, Lucian Piani. He's here. <laughs> God, child, we sit up in his uh, studio and we just, for most, we mostly just talk and eat when we're there. We mostly, and then the music happens, but we have such a good time. And that's a huge component of the message through this show, through this convention. You know, we talk, we, all the music is about, you know, not just working it, girl. We do more than just working it, girl. We, 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 we talk about um, uh, knowing who you really are. Knowing that you are the extension of the power that created this whole universe. So the music becomes a mantra. You put on the music. Yes, it's available on iTunes. <laughs> it is an extension of the message. And the message is the magic here. This whole event, I'm going to say it again. This whole event is for you to go and spread the word. Spread the gospel of being a lovely child of God. I said it. And being someone who, being someone who is gonna gonna spread the word to younger people, because somehow there was a there was a void in between the generations where they didn't get the message. And unfortunately, and I think you know why that void happened. But we can make up for that right now. We can do that through this event and through the shows and everything that we do. Actually, you know, we can tell them the story. I had my sister Renetta tell me about Sylvester and, and Mike Douglas, who told me about Ella Fitzgerald and Blondie. This is where you come in, everybody within the sound of my voice. You are the curator for this next century, for young people coming up behind you to tell the stories of your brothers and sisters who fought the fight and who spread their, spilled their blood so that we could be sitting here in this room today, and that's what this is all about. <laughs> Actually, while I have your attention, does anybody have eyes on Jiggly Caliente? <laughs> I just, I mean, I, I think of this whole event, that's what I'm going to remember the most. <laughs> Anybody in <laughs> eyes? All right, so, am I having any complaints? understand that sort of off-center, twisted sense of humor. That has carried me through so many... And my sisters would tell you, our, you know, we had a lot of trauma in our lives, but it was the laughter that kept us going, kept us through. It was the laughter. It really, and I know, I know you all can testify to that, because it is, especially as, as not just gay people, who are just off, off, off center, there's not the status quo, just over here. That is what has kept us the, the laugh. I love it, Reverend. You know, the, uh, Miles Davis Moody is in the audience tonight. There he is, yes. And if you want some irreverence, you talk to Miles. He's 
so smart. I mean, okay, it's great. He's, he's sexy and he's gorgeous. And you've seen him without his clothes on, you know. But smart and funny and irreverent. He's got it. He's got it. And it's, that's what it's all about. So you, you know, find somebody who, who can make you laugh. Who, you know, again, don't take life so seriously. My fifth grade teacher told me that, by the way. Mr. Pinnell, I was going to high school in Atlanta, Georgia, and, and they think they wanted to pull me out of school just because I wasn't going to classes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like the nerd, the audacity. <laughs> So, you know, I was upset because this was, the, I went to the drama school there and, and that's what I, I went to those classes. I didn't go to the other classes, but he, he was my drama teacher and he said, you know, RuPaul, listen, don't take life too seriously. Now, I didn't know what he meant then, but I'm going to tell you, I know what he means now. I know what he means now. And it was, it was so, it was the best thing I ever learned in school. I didn't go to a lot of classes, so, but <laughs> had I... Had I gone to classes, I may have learned some other things, but that was the most important thing I'd ever learned, you know, and it's, it's just very, very important. Now, for this last part of our little gathering, I'm going to take a few questions from the audience. Now, let me just preface that by saying I have done, I have spoken in colleges, community colleges. <laughs> I've spoken at the appointment rec center before. <laughs> Lots of things, lots of things. But when I want to take, when I take questions from people, a lot of times they want to make a comment. You know, I want to hear your damn comment. <laughs> if I wanted to hear, I would go on Reddit. <laughs> But I want you to ask me a question uh, about, let's, you know, think about it. You know, there's a lot of people here. Um, you know, a, a question that might serve, serve our little gathering here. So, right now, we have just a little bit more time left. I'm going to ask, um, you raise your hand, I'll ask you a question. We'll, we'll start at this section over here. We, we have this girl here with the blue hair. Why don't you come over here? Come over here. I'm, I'm, yes. Come up on stage. Yes. Um, hold my hand. Um, what is your name and where are you from? I'm Queen Irene Dubois from Houston, Texas. <laughs> and what is your question, non comment? <laughs> um, in the context of history, a group of oppressors dressing up in the costume of the oppressed is often taboo, eventually, like white people dressing in blackface. And I'm curious to hear from you why you think the drag does not serve that same purpose. No! That's a good question. Because this is the thing, it's very difficult for people to legislate intent. You know, your intuition knows intent, but the legislator does not know intent. And with drag, the intent behind it is the same as it has been throughout the ages with shaman and witch doctors and court jesters and all of the people who are there to remind the culture to not take it so seriously. Drag's intent is that is to remind humans that this identity or uh, you know what it says you are on your driver's license, that is uh, that is more of an illusion than it is the truth. Because the real truth is that you were the power that created uh, you. They, they, part of the, the whole universe. So that's the intent behind drag. It's to remind people to not take yourself so seriously. Same with a clown or something like that. You know, but the intent with uh, someone who is maybe perhaps doing blackface or something like that, it is, it comes from a, uh, a different place. Not as much um, a, a loving place, which is, let's, let's have fun. 
Do you know what I mean? So that's the difference. That is the difference. And that's why, uh, that's why it's important. Drag is important. in this section right here. How about this lady right here with your hand? Just stand up and ask it. You don't have to come up here. What's your name and where are you from? My name is Chrissy. Chrissy? Yeah. Chrissy? Chrissy from Santa Cruz, California? Okay. Right, she wants to know why, how, why, why her, she, Chrissy wants to know why her 16 year old daughter is obsessed with drag. <laughs> well, because, because at 16 you are closer to the place you were when you entered this realm. You're closer to your God self and so she's still attracted to colors and beauty and music and it hasn't been sort of beaten out of her by culture yet. <laughs> Which is why when you, when you see a child, when you see a baby uh, in a stroller, and, and they, they, they see a drag queen and they see all the sparkly earrings and the colored hair and the colors and stuff, they can't take their eyes off of it because it is our natural state to, to love beauty and the colors and movement and the, the clinkle clinkle of some bracelets, you know. <laughs> That's why she loved because your daughter is a genius. Yeah. <laughs> through our show, who's terrorizing y'all's neighborhoods. <laughs> I think it's only like either 95, something like that. In fact, the, we have, the finale will be our 100th episode. The, uh, the finale on Tuesday will be our 99th episode of RuPaul's Drag Race. People always want to get me to say who my favorite queen is, but they're all my daughters, and um, you, know, you, you can't choose a favorite of my girl. And I know, you know it's Jiggly, but I can't say it. <laughs> no, I can't. I can't say that when Tyra Sanchez is standing right here. <laughs> I, to the truth is, uh, anybody who has the, the chutzpah to get up into drags in a male-dominated culture is my hero. I love, I love all drag. I do. I love, if it's, I love uh, uh, you know, glamour dolls. I love booger drag. I love, I love it all. I think it's just so good because it just it makes me laugh and it's colors and I just love it. I love them all. I love them all. Let's take one over here. Now there's a pretty lady there. Hi. Um, stand up. What's your name? Where are you from? <laughs> now, did you say you're from Bedford, Oregon? It's with an M? Medford, Oregon. Oregon. And you said, what is your name again? But Lena Bitchcock, huh? <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, no, it's a good name. I love it. I love it. <laughs> What's your question? With drag, what is too far? Listen, uh, that's a good question. You know what? 
I grew up, I loved, when I had the soundtrack to the, to the musical Hair when I was a kid. And I listened to it constantly. I loved it. And what, something, the best thing I got from that thing was that one of the characters says, you kids do whatever you want to do, be whatever you want to be. Do it all, so long as you don't hurt anybody else. Yeah. That's, and that's my philosophy in life. That's it right there. So, you do your thing. Do your thing, just as long as you don't hurt anybody else. There's a beautiful brown skinned creature with blonde hair back there with a sparkly top. Oh, you're gorgeous from back here. <laughs> And where are you from? Nicholas, I'm from Los Angeles. Nicholas, Los Angeles. What is your question? I feel like no matter what class you're in, it's hard to be to keep happy. So you in the class that you're in is the supreme drag queen of it all. Like, how do you keep yourself happy in a in a life that where you're so supreme and above and like everything? <laughs> Stay happy no matter what place you're in. Like, how do you do it? That's it. That is, I'm glad you asked that question. I love that question. I'm going to tell you that that needed to be addressed here because, you know, my pre throughout my career, you can see it on YouTube where I, in 1983, I was still saying, if you can't love yourself, how in the hell are you going to love somebody else? Can I get an amen in here? So, and that's cute to say, it always gets a round of applause, but on an everyday basis, it takes practice, ladies and gentlemen. This is, it's cute to say, you, I've seen it on a few t-shirts this evening. <laughs> but what this really entails, when you take care of this thing apart, what that means is, uh, is daily practice. I'm going to tell you something, this is the truth, and I'm not, I'm not religious. I'm sorry, Renetta. I'm sorry, Rosie. I am not religious, but I tell you what I do. The first thing I get out of bed in the morning, I get on my knees and I pray. Now that's that. You can. It doesn't. You don't have to be religious to pray. You, and I, I pray to God. That doesn't mean I'm religious. But I tell you what I do, Nicholas from LA. I will get. First, I get down there and I stretch my old ass. I do. I do. And I, while I'm down there, I sing a few bars of Swanee. That's not true. That's not true. I'm not, that's not true. Uh, that while I'm down there, I will pray, I will meditate, I will, I will take the time to be thankful. I'm, I'm going to tell you what my prayer is. It's very short. I say the same thing. And I'm going to tell you what it is. I'm going to say the same thing every day. I say, dear God, thank you. Thank you for this experience. I say, God, please guide my thoughts, my feelings, and my perception. And I release all resentments to you. Take that away. Amen. Amen. That's what I say. Every morning. That's what I say. That covers everything. That covers everything. And you know, I'll, I, I stretch, I do, I, I'll meditate. And that meditation centers me. And a lot of people understand what meditation is. You know what? Let me just describe it to you in this way. It's, it's being conscious of your consciousness. I know, bear with me. It's like hitting the Google Earth button and seeing the whole landscape from here, the whole thing. I said, oh yeah, oh, there's the, and that's where I was, and that's where Renee ducked and Mama hit her. Right there. And then, that's that, oh, and that's the whole thing. And this is, oh, I can see the whole landscape from here. Oh, and I can see, I can see it all. And, and, and from that, from that vantage point, you don't have to take it that seriously. It's all good. It's all a beautiful gift. So, with that, and that standard, I could do just, a, a, you know, a five minutes of, of meditation, 30 seconds, just to connect with that center and to, to, to be conscious that I'm just, I'm a conscious being, right? So then throughout the day, me loving myself is remembering that right there and doing things to enrich my experience as if I were babysitting a beautiful child, a be the most beautiful child you've ever seen in your life. And you know who that child is? Jiggly Cow. Yeah, the Jiggly Cow. Let the church say amen. Jiggly Cow. 
Ja, ja, bitte. Ja, ciao. Child is jiggly caliente. <laughs> no, silly, that child is you. That child is you. That's you. It's all of you. That's how you love yourself on a daily basis. You know, you get all this. You, you watch the, the news and the, the newspapers. All of that is there to support. We live in a, 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 a consumer culture. When you live in a consumer culture, the way the culture thrives is you have to buy stuff. You gotta buy a lot of stuff. And you gotta buy stuff you don't need. So how are they gonna get you to buy things that you don't need? We're gonna, they have to tell you that you're not whole until you buy that you're not really clean unless you're zestfully clean. <laughs> you know? that's, that's how they do it. So you, ultimately you're gonna start, you feel really, really bad about yourself. You feel really, you feel awful about yourself. You think you gotta buy this, you gotta buy that, you know. So, how do you offset that? You have to take care of yourself. You have to remember that you are the power. You're an extension of the power that created this whole universe. And you have to take care of yourself as if you were babysitting, if you were babysitting the most <laughs> beautiful child. <laughs> heard the new album, it's on iTunes. Um, <laughs> Renetta, uh, she she got she got a bag, she got a bag of cookies and this this blanket and she um, she laid them out in the backyard. It was actually in the canyon. She laid them out and took the cookies out of the paper bag. She said, Root, this is a picnic. She, I'll never forget it. This is a picnic. I said, wow, this is a picnic. And, you know, to someone else, this would just be, you know, blankets and cookies and a paper bag, you know what I'm saying? But the fact that through this experience, she taught me how to perceive life in a magical way. She taught me how to make magic. And magic and miracles, it, uh, they are a, 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 ch a change in your own perception, how you look at it. And part of loving yourself is to know that you are the architect of your life. That's why I all drag queens, I love them all, because once you become the realization of your imagination, that is when you are, you are your God self. That's when you are taking matters into your own hands. Let the church say amen. amen. And you are creating the life you were meant to live. That's what it's all about. Yet people will talk about you. That's all right. They will talk whether you do it or not. But, they, you know, but it's like mom used to say, unless they pay your bills, you pay them bitches no mind. <laughs> Not everybody can do it. Not everybody can do it. Everybody, a lot of people, you know, they buckle under the, the pressure of, you know, society. Never been my problem, but, uh, you know. As, you know, but again, uh, yeah, I had a support system that helped with that. In fact, my mother, man, she was she was she was punk rock before punk was rock. <laughs> well, look who just walked in. <laughs> the Second World War. <laughs> you have the right money. This man has been doing my hair and my makeup and my spiritual adjustments. His name is Matthew Anderson. Give him a big You know, when 
I see, and so many, we've been doing signings, and people have said to me, you know, when, when you walk out on the runway, it, 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 it takes my breath away too, by the way. I look at it and I go, oh, you know, I, when he does it, when he does it, my, the hair and makeup and, the, and everything, really, uh, I can see it, but I don't really see it. I don't really see it until it's on TV. And then I go, oh, oh my God. And I got to tell you, this is the reason why right here, ladies and gentlemen. I sit there in the mirror and I watch him do it and I can literally, talk about magic, I can literally see the magic happening, I can see it happening in, the, in that moment. I, I'm doing another show, I have several shows on the air right now, I was, and uh, <laughs> on, on, the doctor on Good Work, he invited, it's actually this Tuesday, this Tuesday episode, they show it, they, he, Dr. DeGro invited me into the operating room as he performed a facelift. And they didn't, they didn't know how I was going to react. They said, you know, Brooke, if you, you know, if you feel sick, remember, don't do it that way, not into the picture. You know? And he said, um, uh, if you feel faint, like you might just remember to sort of fall backwards. Well, I get, I throw up, I get in there. There was none of that. And I, it's, it's probably part of my Scorpio nature, but what happened? You know, I got in there and I realized this has nothing to do with me and my, oh, my star! It had nothing to do with that. I got in there. There is a human being, a power, an extension of the power of being, laying on this table. And he's like, we're going to get to work here. He had me sit right, he, this doctor's here. I'm sitting right here, right here. She, she's cut open and it, it was beautiful. I swear to you, it was beautiful. The most beautiful thing of it was like watching the, where the flesh and the spirit meet. It was the most beautiful. I swear to you, it's the most beautiful thing I've ever seen in my life. I've had a lot of experiences in this life. It had to be one of the top five experiences I've ever had. Sitting in that operating room while she and then she came on the show this Tuesday at uh, what time is it going to be? Ten o'clock on Tuesday on E. Everybody. <laughs> It's, and she comes on the show and she looks gorgeous. And this was just four weeks later. I, this, I, by the way, I'm obsessed with plastic surgery in case you hadn't noticed. But um, I haven't had anything. I've had a little filler. I've had uh, several buckets of Botox. <laughs> it's true. I'm not, I'm not ashamed of it. There ain't no shame here. But I, I'm just obsessed with, with procedures and stuff. And, um, you know, anyway, so this. When Matthew does the hair, I can see it's the same kind of thing. The um, the um, makeup, the magic. I'm watching in the mirror as I can literally see the magic happening in his hands. He is a magician. This one, crazy, 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 crazy. So okay, what time is it, Joel? We we gonna wrap this thing up. This is this Matthew's thing right here. He's not gonna need this here. I'm gonna give this to you right. Could you please give a round of applause to Joel here who keeps my affairs in order. Yes. Now, uh, coming up next in our program, actually, Mr. Magic himself, Matthew, will be coming up next for the next part of our seminar. And actually, Raj is gonna gonna do the introduction. Raj, come on up. Yes. Look at you. Give her a big round of applause. I want you all to head down to the RuPaul Realness uh, Experience downstairs and get some some of the gorgeous products that we are slashing the prizes. <laughs> We're slashing the prizes on things. Yes, so go down there and get the stuff. I'm going to hand it over to Raja. Until then, everybody say love.